I was browsing through your videos and saw you did a video on lake and sea creatures. After listening to it, I thought you might like to hear the story of a man that I used to be close friends with. I used to be close friends with a guy who managed a small team of recreational divers that would often go out on lakes and practice doing deep diving, compression stopping, and other things. Lake water is vastly different than the ocean, which is why this was more aimed at beginners looking to get their feet wet, literally, into diving, and the basics. The man's name, who I will mention, was named Earl. Earl had done many sea diving expeditions, but eventually transitioned to freshwater diving as he got older. I was good friends with the man. Very good friends, actually. Unfortunately, he decided to take his own life last year, in March of 2019. I thought it would be good to share with what he shared with me. On one of his last, if not his last, freshwater diving expedition, he and a couple of students went freshwater diving in one of the Great Lakes. I can't remember which one. Forgive me. I think it was Superior, but I can't quite remember. He claims to have been attacked violently by what he described as a part marine crocodile, part creature of the Black Lagoon. This man was not a fearmonger by any means and was a very honest person. He did not show fear of the water, and safety was his number one mantra before diving. He knew the cons and knew the risks. This had scared him so bad that he quit his diving expeditions altogether entirely. Because we were so close, he was one of the few people he had talked about what he had seen that day, saying they were exploring part of the bottom, using specialized metal detectors for treasure hunting when this thing came out of a pocket at the bottom and nearly ripped his leg right off his body. Had he not moved just in time, it would have. It followed him closely to the surface as he retreated in fear, grabbing onto him and trying to drown him. It gashed at his back several times just trying to grab onto him and pull him down. Upon getting back up on the boat, he required severe medical attention immediately. His wounds were not life-threatening, but did require stitches from bleeding out and possible infection. I wasn't made aware of this until probably four months after the incident happened in the summer. He told me briefly what I just told you above, and that was that. I didn't want to push for more details than necessary, because he seemed so shook about the experience that he had. That's when he told me he was done diving altogether, and he could have really endangered the lives of his students and friends. I didn't hear from him much after that, only through text now and then but it was still minimal, not like it used to be. The years prior, we would go out and do stuff together, like hiking, eating at good restaurants, looking back at it. He actually never took me diving, to which I'm surprised it didn't happen. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. Then 2019 hit. I would reach out to him, but not hear anything from him. And then March comes. I got a phone call from his girlfriend at the time, who called me, and let me know that he hung himself the night previous. He had developed a strong drinking problem in the months prior to his death. I don't know if what happened to him on the last diving adventure had anything to do with him drinking and ending his life. I would like to think there's no connection. He never once talked about depression, and always seemed like a lively and active busy man. He would have been the perfect definition of not having enough time to be depressed. Tragedy aside, I felt it would be best if you knew his final diving account. This happened to me back when I was a kid in the 90s. Because of what happened on this lake, I'm not going to mention the name. I want people to refrain from going here. It's dangerous. My family and I were the only ones here at this time. I'll give you a hint. This was on one of the mountains up in the Pacific Northwest. I can tell you that much. We were with our cousins and my aunt and uncle. Around this area is also several smaller ponds that we believe the lakes feed into underground, but we're not quite sure. The lake itself is surrounded by tons of timber and is beautiful and full of solitude. Me and a few of my cousins couldn't wait to go and jump in the lake. It was a hot day in July, 
and after eating some good barbecue burgers and hot dogs, we were ready to take a good swim. There was actually a rope swing on one of the rocks on the east side of the lake that was a little higher up than the rest, and almost acted as the perfect jumping plateau to use the rope to jump into the lake. My cousins and I had a blast jumping in and out of the water a few times here and there, and just gallivanting around. I remember at that point, my cousin guessed that I couldn't swim all the way across the lake, which I clearly couldn't because I wasn't in that kind of shape. So, being kids, I was like, bet you can't swim as far as I can, and we raced each other. My cousins were able to outswim me by probably 40 to 50 feet, and I started really losing momentum and power after a little while. I had to stop to catch my breath, and so all the while, I'm hovering there in the water while I'm watching my cousins swim far beyond me and competing amongst themselves to see if they can get to the other side of the shore. This lake was not humongous by any means, but it was easily 200 feet across if I had to take a wild guess. I'm probably wrong on that guesstimate, but I'm just trying to give you somewhat of a painted picture of how big this lake was. I'm watching my cousins floating there in the water and laughing at how hard they are trying to outswim each other when I felt something scaly brush against my left foot. I looked down, but it was too murky to see anything, and immediately my thoughts went to a trout because this lake was used for all sorts of fishing. Well, I think more just trout than anything else, but even my family had brought fishing poles, and my uncle, who is an avid fisherman, has fished in here before and has caught some great tasting trout. Anyway, I bring my attention back to my cousins who've almost made it to the other side of the shore, or so it looks like. That's when the nightmare began. The whole situation is just a bit of a blur, but I can remember distinct details here and there. Let me explain. I don't think it was more than just a few seconds after watching my cousins almost fully ascend on the opposing shoreline when what I can describe to you as a scaly-like hand grabbed my ankles tightly and pulled me down underneath the surface of the water. I submerged quickly and in a panic looked down to see what the hell had grabbed me, thinking it was maybe one of my cousins or so pulling a prank. Even though the water was murky like a lake would, the sun was about directly overhead, giving more light shining through, which meaning luck was on my side. Looking down into the water, I saw the most horrific looking reptilian face and it greeted me underneath with its jaws agape and sharply pointed alligator-like teeth as both of its hand had clasped onto both my ankles. At that moment, it's like my heart came to a stop and I froze. I mean, not just me, time itself stood still. My brain was trying to digest and understand what was this thing grabbing me and pulling me under the water, but my brain simply couldn't process what it was seeing. Even though the water was murky, I was still able to make out the general look at what this thing was under the water, even with the sunlight up above. This might sound like it dragged on for a while, but I promise this only occurred within a couple of seconds because... After it grabbed me, it kept trying to pull me down more and more, and as soon as it grabbed me, it showed its ugly face and huge teeth, but didn't attempt to bite me like I thought it would. With both of its hands around my ankles, it took me down more and more to where it got just a little darker. Don't get the wrong impression. I wasn't the calm, normal kid that I was during this. In fact, I was freaking out screaming in full panic mode. In fact, I'm actually surprised I didn't drown. I was probably pulled 20 or so feet under the surface because it was getting darker and somehow, whatever was pulling onto me must have lost its grip or that's kind of what it felt like because I was kicking so much and with every ounce of adrenaline in my body, I pushed myself to the shore as fast as I could. I think in that moment, my mind was probably going blank or short circuiting by panicking so hard that I could not even comprehend reality around me. I don't know if I mentioned it already, but I was only eight years old at the time. I kicked and used every ounce of energy I possibly had to get myself to shore, but it was roughly a good 40 feet from the shoreline. Guessing again, of course. My family is freaking out, hysterical and screaming my name because they saw me go under for a few seconds and saw me swimming frantically 
back out towards the shore, and my cousins who are on the other side of the shore are laughing, thinking I'm either pretending or just trying to play a big joke. They didn't get it. What probably only lasted maybe 20 seconds felt like an eternity as I clawed and made my way to shore as hard as I could. I'm not sure that if whatever it was in the water that originally grabbed me never tried to grab me after that, I can't remember, but I made it to shore. After I got to the shallow part of the shore, I pulled myself up to run and noticed both my ankles felt like they were broken. I hadn't noticed, but now that I was trying to run on them, I made it a few steps onto the shore and just collapsed. My family was already rushing over to me to my aid as I lost consciousness. This is what I was told, of course, and a lot of it was a blur to me. I think the brain has a way of wiping traumatic memories from our brains to ensure our sanity, but nonetheless, I felt like I survived. I woke up to my family surrounding me and an EMT checking me out. I guess I had been unconscious for about 12 minutes, the EMT had told me, and even had stopped breathing at times. My mother, hysterically crying, and my cousins and all my family were freaking out trying to figure out what the hell had just happened. I can remember the EMT calmly asking me what happened. In my dazed state, I had tried to recall that something that looked like a giant lizard looking thing grabbed me and pulled me under. My family nor the EMT broke their concerned expression, but all their attention was down at my ankles. Looking down to see what they were looking at, both ankles were not only swollen and bruised, but had the stinging, burning purple marks on them. I don't know how else to describe the phenomenon. I tried to move my feet, but I could barely. The pain was so bad and it was almost like a shooting burning pain. It felt like somebody took a sledgehammer to both my ankles, then put them in a vise and then poured acid on my skin. It was like a chemical burn. It was after that that I spent the next day or so in the hospital but the doctors couldn't come to a conclusion on what had happened to my ankles. The summary was that I must have brushed up against a log or some sort of fish in which I was horrifically allergic to. That didn't explain my inability to walk for the next few weeks after and that using crutches or how my ankles were so badly bruised and smashed. I don't want to say smashed really, but they felt like somebody dropped a rock on them. It was awful. It took a few weeks to recover, but I did and we never ended up going back to that lake again, nor did my family really ask questions about what it saw. My cousins though, they wanted to know exactly what happened and so did my mother. When I looked down into the water, the first thing I remember seeing was these yellow reptilian eyes, followed by a longer reptilian looking face or snout and a huge row of teeth as it opened its jaws. It didn't open its jaws to try and bite me though, like I said earlier. It's like it was looking up at me, opening its mouth, and proceeded to grab onto me and pull me down deep into the darkness below, beyond the stretch of light. I fought with everything I had in me, and I don't know why it let go, or if it lost its grip or what, but it did, and I never bothered to look back down to see if it was there anymore, as I swam my way back to shore. If I had to guess, maybe it was some unknown water amphibian reptile thing. I'm not sure. The hands, when they grabbed me, almost reminded me of a larger version of iguana hands, if that makes sense. I know that can be kind of hard to make out in the moment of fear and being dragged underwater, but it had long spindly lizard scaly fingers. I couldn't recall any claws, but I didn't feel them, and the hands were far bigger than my legs. Whatever it was, it was certainly larger than I. I want to refrain from saying the name of the lake because as popular as it is, I just don't want anyone hearing this and going in there and experiencing the same thing I did when I was a child, and I wish it would just be shut down to be honest. Whatever is in that lake that lives down there, there's more than just fish, that's for sure. And unfortunately, the eerie details don't end quite there. So a few years later, I guess there were some divers that had gone swimming down in that same lake and discovered that the bottom was over 100 feet deep and featured many small caverns ranging in size from a car to deeper down 
where the cavern and cavern openings were actually much larger, and supposedly even made from lava tubes and such, and more than likely they were tunnels that connected to potentially other larger and smaller lakes and ponds nearby underground. The one detail that really makes my blood run cold is that these divers found some decomposing bodies of animals down in some of these water caverns. One being half a deer and a couple of other small animals. Now you tell me, how does a deer carcass get 100 feet down into the lake in one of these smaller caverns? Something had to eat it or put it down there. Or better yet, do what alligators do and store their food down at the bottom. My mind went to the thing that pulled me down and stored it as food. I don't know. I'm just trying to guess, but it freaks me out to think about, and I still have nightmares about it. It was a very traumatic experience for me, and I'm thankful that overall, my family is respectful enough not to keep talking to me about it. I think that day, seeing the EMT and the marks on my legs was probably traumatic enough for them that they didn't really need to ask questions, I guess. I got the chance, about 10 years ago, to go deep sea diving off the coast of Mexico, where I firmly believe I saw what looked to be a plesiosaur. We were diving out and probably around 20 miles off the coast with me in the water and my other three diving partners getting ready for their descent. I had ventured probably no more than 50 yards away from the boat and, of course me being me, was the first one in the water. I could see out clearly in the water. The open ocean, there was this large shape coming in my direction. My three other diving partners were still on the boat. I think taking their time getting out to the water. I continued to watch this large shape, in awe, figuring it was a very large fish, possibly a sunfish. Well, I was partially right, as it got closer and began turning east to change directions. What I believe to change direction with the current, actually. That's when I got a pretty good look at the shape of it. And it looked exactly like that of a plesiosaurus, a rather long neck with four smaller fins. It's like I was living in Jurassic Park. The thing about plesiosaur is they are a very distinctive shape. There is no mistaking or misidentifying them. That silhouette, that shape will always be with me. I was amazed at what I was seeing and couldn't believe that I was the only one seeing this amazing sight. I felt for my diving partners who still remained upon the boat. The whole entire sighting lasted maybe 30 seconds, but it felt much longer. Once it disappeared from view, I quickly swam back to the boat, yelling about what I had just seen, in total amazement. I thought it was incredible, breathtaking, an experience to be had. I boasted about how I just got to witness something that we all thought to be extinct. A couple of my friends believed me, but one of them just thought I was a loon and making it up. I know what I saw. There is no mistaking such a shape like that off in the water. The distance of this animal was far away, but not so far that I couldn't make out or distinguish what it was. It's like if a great white shark were to swim towards you and then turn into the current. From a good distance, a shark is distinctively a shark. There's no misidentifying it. They have a very unique shape and size. You don't have to be 20 feet away to get an estimate on the size and type of animal of those. The same applied to this scenario. Its neck and tail were very long, and it had a smaller head than what I envisioned, but maybe if I was closer, I could see more of the intricacies. From my distance, it looked to be a green, blue, gray color. The discovery of such a large beast from 40 million years ago makes for even more interesting discoveries that'll lead to more understanding of our prehistoric past. And, because so much of the world's diversity, especially in the deep sea, can be found in the ocean floor, the discovery of so many ancient organisms will only fuel the quest for understanding this crucial step of cycle on our planet. This alone is the reason I strive for deep dives and to be pushing for more exploration. Good day. When I was a teenager, I used to go fishing with my dad all the time, and we had several great fishing spots around where we lived that we would frequent during the spring and summertime. My dad took me fishing from when I was just a young boy. It was our favorite pastime, 
and we still continue to do it to this day. But there were times here and there that due to my dad's work schedule, I just had to fly solo for a day of fishing, which I always enjoyed the peace and quiet anyway. My dad still doesn't know about this to this day because I am and always was afraid he wouldn't believe me. So I've refrained from saying anything, but I have told a few friends here and there as I've gotten older and they have no idea what it is. And surprisingly, believe me, I went to one of our good fishing spots on a day in spring when my dad had to work late. And so I thought I would get an early start and get out there and hopefully catch some fish. Usually, my dad and I were fairly lucky when it came to catching, but this morning, the fish biting and game was dead. I probably sat there for a good seven hours waiting for a bite, only to get nothing. It's very unusual for no fish or signs of life to be in the water like there was, so I thought that was weird. These ponds are usually always full of life. Frogs, tadpoles, small fish, even flies, mosquitoes, nothing. There was usually no shortage of life, and now it was dead. Like I said, this day was unusually quiet, but I didn't think anything of it at the time. I was just a boy. Off to the right, I started to hear some movement in the water, like a large fish coming up to the surface, and I got really excited, hoping this would be my one chance to catch something really big and impress my dad. To my surprise, well, more to just my surprise, out of the water came the most ugliest, creepiest, amphibian looking thing I've ever seen. Upon first glance, it actually reminded me of that old 1950s black and white horror movie. I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. Oh wait, Creature of the Black Lagoon, I think. I'm not too sure, but many of you listening to this will know exactly what I'm talking about. It was humanoid looking, but it was also scaly and green and slimy, and was kind of a vibrant green. It burst right out of the water, walking up onto the shoreline, opposite of where I was. Its back was to me, so it never turned or saw me or looked at me. So I think, and it walked off right into the forest nonchalantly. It burst out of the water and just walked up to the shoreline and off in the woods so quickly that I didn't even breathe for a good 30 seconds. I was frozen, not even sure how to comprehend what I had just witnessed. After regaining somewhat of a grip on reality, I realized I totally pissed my pants and I fled back to my house in total fear. I didn't really go fishing with my dad after that for about a good month and just told him I wasn't feeling well whenever he wanted to go with me. After a while, we ended up going back and even back to that same spot. I made the exception with my father because he made me feel safe and I never saw or encountered anything like that ever again. Even now when I fish, I really have no explanation for what I saw, but to give a little more detail, it was tall and slender. Taller than my father, and he's around 6'2". It was what I would call slime green and had long black claws hanging from its hands, or what looked to be hands. I can't give you an accurate estimate on how far away it was for me, but far enough away that I could see enough detail to make out what it was. I also wasn't making any sounds, so I'm assuming that's why it never turned around to notice me. Like I said before, the best way I could summarize it is that from behind, it looks like some sort of amphibious humanoid sort of thing. I have no idea why it had long black claws on the end of each of its hands or what it could be used for. It was also a clear, sunny, bright day out, so there was clearly no misidentification on what I saw. I got a clear as day view for a good 5 to 10 seconds, and there's no mistaking it. As much as it scared the hell out of me, I did not let it stop me from enjoying my love of fishing, which I still love to do to this day. Again, I have not had any experiences with anything like this since, and hope I don't. For the meanwhile, I'm going to just keep loving fishing. I have been wanting to tell my story for some time, but I have held back because it's so crazy. I have had to convince myself that I'm not crazy and I was not hallucinating. Let me give you some backstory before I get into the nitty gritty. This was in May of 2015. I was with my ex-girlfriend at the time and we were driving down the coast of Washington, Oregon 
and down into California, all along Highway 101, which travels down the coastline of these three states. One of our favorite things to do is to go out onto the beach at nighttime. We have done this more than once, had no problems ever, with bums, police, anything. Nobody ever gives us problems. There's just something so enticing about the moonlight shining out over the vast empty ocean with nobody around and the tide continuously rising. It's a beautiful experience. At the time, I believe we were in Southern Oregon. I can't tell you what beach or by what town because I don't know. We just pulled off to a spot in a spontaneous moment. We just pulled off the side of the road to a spot that had beach access, grabbed our blanket and our hoodies and ran off into the beach to watch the tide come in. Luckily for us, there was still plenty of space for us to sit and watch the night sky. Even better, it was a clear night with a bright moon illuminating the night sky, paving this out of this world landscape. My favorite thing about night adventures on the beach is that there's nobody else around, so that was truly something. We get set up with our blanket and we sit down to start cuddling and talking about how beautiful the beach is. It's windy as can be, which is why we wore our hoodies. I don't think there's a beach in the world that isn't windy. We were just watching the waves crash onto the shore, making small conversation. Maybe 10 minutes go by, and my girlfriend is like, hey, let's build a fire and roast to some marshmallows. We had some kindling and firewood in the back of the car that we kept for such occasions. She wanted me to go run and get it. It didn't take much convincing. I was agreeing. After a quick kiss, I started to get up when both of our attention just happened to be pulled out in the distance where we saw this shape climb out of the sand. It happened so fluidly and quickly. To make it easier to understand, this is exactly what my girlfriend, whom I talked to later about it, and verified we saw the same thing. A person, a pitch black figure, climbed their way out of the sand and run towards the water, reached the water, and continued running into the water, not even phased by the oncoming waves, until they were fully submerged underneath the waves and never came back out. I hadn't even stepped off the blanket yet when my girlfriend and I in unison rush up, grab our blanket, and head back to the car in total fear. We get the car started and we got out of there, flying down the highway. We didn't say a word for probably a half an hour, maybe longer. I was the one to break the silence with asking her what she saw, where she calmly explained to me, I don't know how, but she did, what I had just typed to you. I knew as soon as she told me that, I wasn't hallucinating. We were not under any substance, alcohol, weed, nothing. 100% sober, not sleep deprived, no pills, nothing. This was maybe 50 feet away from us. This figure, which was totally pitch black, ran out onto the sea, continued going until fully submerged. What? Why? Even in the dim lighting that the moon provided, had it been a person, we would have seen colors of clothing or some sort of shape, but this, it was just the silhouette of a person. There was no defining extra shapes like clothes on them or anything. It was super creepy. Then for this figure or person to run not only into the water, but into it until fully underneath by the waves. We were seriously mind screwed. We debated and talked about it for hours afterwards, speculating what it could have been. I think my girlfriend at the time concluded that we saw a ghost of a sailor who had died and was running back to sea. I don't believe in that. Besides, why would a ghost interact with our world like that? Literally digging their way out of sand like it did in full view of us and running into the water it wasn't some transparent apparition either. That's my super creepy night experience at the beach. Make of it what you will, but I promise I'm not crazy. We both saw this and we can both testify to this day that this is truth. My grandfather used to be a commercial fisherman up in Alaska around the 1960s and told me of a tale of a sea beast that him and his crew encountered while they were 100 plus miles out at sea at night. Well, not totally night because there was still the evening sun out, so it was more dusk. 
but something had moved underneath the ship. They were on an industrial sized fishing boat, so something really large must have bumped into the boat, and their guess was a whale, but moments later, this giant, what my grandfather describes as dragon-like head, emerges from the water on a long neck and stares over at the boat for a second and then submerges back underneath the water and disappears. Him and his crew went into a frenzy and panicked at what they had just saw. When the boat was first rocked from underneath, my grandfather told me that they thought they had hit some sort of rock or possibly a whale or something, and then a few moments later, this large head emerges about 50 to 100 feet away from the boat to stare back at them. He says the head raised up on a long neck that was higher than the deck of the boat because this creature, whatever it was, was looking down at them. I should note that my grandfather is a huge horror movie and sci-fi movie buff, and he eats it up, which works out in his favor, because he was really able to relate to me how this creature looked like what he saw. He couldn't tell me an exact horror movie per se, but he did say that some of the more modern day dragon movies seemed to resemble what the sea creature looked like, and always thought that this was a real life living leviathan. When I asked him an estimated size of the head, he said it was easily the size of a small sedan. That's pretty huge for a head. They never got to see the body of what this thing was attached to since only the neck and head emerged out of the water, but he estimated it to be humongous considering it went underneath the boat and had enough force behind it to seriously knock the fishing boat around. And keep in mind, this is a big fishing boat. We're talking about an industrial fishing boat. Here's a few more details. So, the boat at the time was actually anchored, and like I said earlier, they were probably a hundred or so miles off the coast of Alaska somewhere. When I asked him for even more details of what the skin and face looked like, or if he remembers seeing any eyes. He recalled it as having dark green skin, covered in large scales the size of a human torso, and said it had deep greenish blue eyes. It had a long lizard dragon-like face, and said it was comparable to the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Jurassic Park movies, but also a little more dragon-like if that makes any sense, but couldn't see or make out any of the teeth of this creature since it never opened its mouth. Actually, one thing I wanted to mention is I'm a huge lover of the video game Skyrim, and of course my grandfather has watched me play it before, and he's made comments before about how the dragons look in that game, and how similar they look to what he saw that day. Anyway, just a quick side note for you. Anyway, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just simply google Skyrim Dragons, and just know that whatever he saw looked like a mix between that and the T-Rex from Jurassic Park 1 and 2. Anyway, he told me that this creature probably didn't see the boat as any sort of threat and probably bumped into it by accident and stuck its head out of the water to see what it was out of curiosity since he said that's kind of the gist he got from it. He's had other bizarre experiences out at sea, but that one certainly takes the cake with an unknown creature that he's never seen before. The entire crew on the ship was terrified and it halted a lot of progress for a day or so before progress regained. Something interesting that he told me was that whole day they were having an awful time catching anything and were potentially thinking of moving locations because just a few days prior, well, even just a day prior, they were catching their quota in fish and that was just a bad day for fishing. Then what do you know, come the evening time and they run into this thing. Makes me wonder that if the fish in the area fled knowing this giant animal marine thing whatever it was was around, kind of like how deer and other animals will flee an area when they know an alpha predators are around. I don't have any substantial proof for that claim, but it really just makes you think when you think about how animals act in biology and science. Interesting. It all started for me when I was a young boy, as I remember watching an educational program about animals living in caves on TV. The idea got me thinking about how many life forms that we see on this earth, and when I got older and started going on deep diving missions and saw a living plesiosaur, my heart felt to fear. I've been doing several deep sea dives with various hobbyists, friends, and likes, including scuba diving and deep sea fishing. In the depths of the ocean, 
Deep water often causes a change in the food chains that may have the effect of changing the distribution of species and possibly even causing them to go extinct. It's amazing how such incredible creatures can live in this very harsh environment, yet remain seemingly unchanged. My friends and I have only just begun to learn more about the life on the deep and the many ways we can protect them from these dangerous predators. One of my friends is passionate about conservation and has been working with scientists worldwide to better understand life in the deep sea. And I'm glad the opportunity to work together made the most sense for me. What type of animal lived on the ocean floor around 500 million years ago? I can assure you that I have some interesting things to say about that, but I'll save that. It's easy to think that the life forms living on Earth today would have been extinct long before the dinosaurs. However, some of the most complex and important structures we see are formed when we find animals at the bottom of the sea. It takes thousands of years or longer for them to die. This is why I believe we saw the plesiosaur. Living at such depths and so many places to hide that the ocean offers, it would be very easy for elusive species of animals to hide and mask themselves to not be known to mankind. This is why we choose to only deep dive in certain areas, times, and depths for protection against the unknown. Yes, we did indeed see what we truthfully believed to be a living dinosaur in the flesh close up. Even though plesiosaur are carnivorous and eat fish, it showed no signs of aggression towards us in the deep water and simply ignored us as it swam by, unfazed by our bright lights to see. It wasn't much bigger than a smaller elephant, which, when it belongs to a creature like this, is still shocking. I always imagined aquatic dinosaurs being so much larger, but it might have been a young one. We are currently advocating for bigger budgets to do even deeper diving missions, to explore regions and parts left to the ocean. We want to unveil to the world the undiscovered to mankind. Sorry for the long email. You'll hear from me again if we truly do capture great evidence. A few years ago, when a couple of friends and mine were on a buddy's boat swimming around the San Juan Islands outside of Seattle, at least I believe that's what it's called, Please, if anybody's hearing this, correct me, because I am not native to Seattle. We saw what we thought was some sort of large water serpent. At least that's what it looked like. It was a clear summer day, and we were cruising around on his boat, having a good time when my friend exclaims and points off to his left, What's that in the water? And we all look to see, and we can see this serpent-like creature swimming quickly, zigzagging through the water momentarily, raising its head and going back under. My one friend suggested that it was a sea serpent, but I don't know. Sea serpents don't get that big, and this thing was pretty long. If I had to guess, it was probably around 20 plus feet long and the thickness of a small tree. It was a little ways off in the water, but it looked slimy and scaly and had a dark blue and gray hue to it. I don't recall seeing any eyes, but it had a very serpent-like head. We weren't really terrified as much as we all were amazed at what we had seen, and that was the topic for the rest of the cruise. That's when my other friends mentioned that it could be the Ogopogo creature that supposedly lives in this area and the water, but I don't know. Not being a native to Seattle and this area, it was quite a surprise for me, since I live down in California, and I know we have our own fair share of lake and sea creatures, but this was on a whole different level to physically see it. I have never seen something before in the flesh that I could not explain. So cool, but so scary. When I was seven years old and camping at a lake with my family, I was swimming alone in the water when I saw what I believe was a lake monster. It was so large that it was easily three times bigger than I. It had a massive head, dark red skin, and huge long fins at its side. It had teeth that were long and pointed, as sharp as knives. I screamed like a little girl. It slowly inched closer and closer to me. I yelled to my family and I swam for my life. I couldn't believe it. I was so frightened that I swam as fast as I could back to my mother and father at shore. My parents were screaming at me, knowing I was in danger. 
My dad, bless his heart, in his full non-swimming clothes, jumped in head first and swam towards me to rescue me. He gets me and pulls me out of the water. I'm hyperventilating and I'm trying to explain what I just saw. And I was worried that being seven years old, they wouldn't take what I had to say very seriously. Well, they did to an extent. My mother tried to explain it by saying I just saw a big fish, but I told her this one was going to eat me. Looking back, it kind of reminded me of some sort of crocodile, maybe a freshwater crocodile, but I ain't ever seen a crocodile that looked anything like this did. This occurred at Louisville Lake in Texas. You know what they say, everything is bigger in Texas, even the lake monsters and carnivorous fish. In the early 2000s, I was practicing to be a diving instructor, or at least that's the direction I was headed. That is, until I had this strange experience that scared me so bad, it made me not want to be in the ocean anymore. You might hear this and think I'm totally overreacting, but the sheer mystery of the ocean is just on a whole other level. I was practicing at the time, down off the coast of Florida, where I would regularly dive at the time with other experienced divers and friends alike. I don't know how much of you know about diving, but there is such a thing that exists called decompression stops in which you have to slowly allow your body to readjust to the levels around you. Otherwise, your body will have too much nitrogen and the buildup can cause bubbles to form inside your body, causing severe tissue and nerve damage, even death if you ascend too quickly, which was ruled as what had killed my buddy, but we'll get to that. Anyway, I wasn't really doing anything official as far as training goes. I had a couple of buddies that did this professionally, so I would just recreationally go out with them and have them show me the ropes so that way I had some sort of edge when I went to apply to do it professionally, since I'll have already had all the experience. This particular day, we went quite far out and we were diving a little deeper than usual off a small oceanic cliff area. What I mean by that is the bottom below us was probably 30 to 50 feet and then there was just an ocean drop off where the ocean drop off goes off into the open sea. And this drop off, well, you couldn't see the bottom. It was just pure open ocean. Being in warm tropical waters, so we already knew about the dangers like barracuda, man -o war and sharks and whatever else is out there but I'll never understand what I saw. Diving for me is sort of a thrill. Well, not sort of, it is. At least at that time. Part of the enjoyment was not only being in an environment that I wasn't necessarily used to being in, but it was seeing all the amazing sights and animals around me. Even though there were dangerous animals that could potentially kill me, I still enjoyed it. During this rendezvous, I was with a friend of mine who was a professional and he was showing me some really cool reefs that were down in there. Our boat, which was anchored, probably about 100 feet away from us, sitting idle as we enjoyed and explored every little ounce of the ocean floor reef before us. Because we were in southern Florida, the waters were a little more clear, and looking up at the boat was still perfect in sight. As we made our way, we approached the large cliff I was talking about, and even thought that it dropped out into the open ocean. Swimming out into the open ocean, you can see a small cavern opening down just a little bit. Even though it was murky, it was still fairly visible. My friend, being the more experienced diver of course, he was all about that and exploring and the thrill of adventure and told me to hold on. He was going to go see if he could explore. The cavern opening was more than large enough for him to fit through. He swam down, pulled out his flashlight with him even though it was getting darker where he was swimming. This entrance was probably another 50 feet down, just barely enough light to see the entrance. I sat there eagerly watching him enter the small cavern entrance and his light disappeared as he entered. I want you to understand that where he was in correlation to the surface was probably now 100 plus feet. I'm sitting there watching the entrance and also keeping an eye around me and my surroundings, trying to keep close to the reef so that way I'm not caught off guard by any sort of oceanic predators. There's plenty of light outside, so I wasn't really concerned, and I knew most of the predators around here were nocturnal. A few moments later, well, probably about 10 or so minutes actually, 
I see my friend flying out of that cavern, up towards the direction of the boat, and away from me, as I'm trying to throw my arms up and get his attention, but he is going so fast, like he's on a mission. Confused and wondering why he's not stopping to do any decompression stops, movement catches my eye from the cavern opening. To my horror, this large gelatin-like blob thing with what looked to be long tentacle-like appendages emerges slowly out of the cavern and starts hovering or blobbing, making its way towards me. I don't know how to call it. It reminded me of an octopus crossed with a jellyfish or something. It was bizarre, but it looked like it had stingers on its appendages or tentacles, and they were long and moved with it. I moved as fast as I could back to the boat with my friend, almost there. Since I was around 30 or so feet from the surface, I didn't have to worry about doing any decompression stops. I turned and I see this blob thing floating up faster and faster towards me, getting closer, extending its tentacles out. I finally get back to the boat with this thing still in the distance and I'm able to climb up and greet my friend who had already climbed up in the boat and was vomiting profusely. After catching my breath for a few moments, I try to get out of him what the hell just happened when he tells me he went down into that cavern and it had a small drop off point where you could swim deeper straight down. And that's where he went for quite a ways when he swam into what he can only describe as an unknown creature that nearly devoured him. He said if he would have swam further, it would have opened up into its mouth and sucked him right in, kind of like some of those big catfish. He didn't look right though. He looked pale and very sick and said one of its tentacles grabbed onto its thigh and ripped open his wetsuit where he had these strange holes in his leg that was bleeding and almost had a pus-like consistency oozing out. He knew that he had not done his decompression stops and he might die due to the severe nitrogen in his body and said he had made a huge mistake by fleeing so quickly. I asked him if he knew what it was, but I didn't tell him that I saw it climb out of the cavern out to us and said he had no idea. I think he was so caught up in his nausea and feeling sick. He told me he initially thought it just dropped off into an empty rock cavern, but this thing must have been living in there. On the way back to the shore, he began having a seizure and died right there on the spot once we arrived. I believed his death was noted as decompression sickness, but I don't know for sure. I've never seen a wound like what was on his leg, and even though he wasn't bleeding out into the water, what I saw, his leg didn't look to be in great shape. Whatever that thing was, blobbing itself through the water towards us, freaked him the hell out, and me. That was the last time I ever really went diving, and have had no desire to explore the unexplored. Was it that thing that killed him, or did he really die of decompression sickness? I'll never know. When we got back to shore, and the EMTs weren't able to save him or try to revive him, I'm not really sure what to make of the whole thing, but I try to keep his memory alive and still do things fun and exciting and adventurous on land to honor my best friend. It was a traumatic experience for me, but I feel like enough time has passed now to where I could safely and calmly talk about it and honor my friend. About two years ago, I went with a friend, let's call him John, on his boat out to sea for a little vacation with him and his wife. Our plan was to sail up and down the west coast for weeks at a time. He's a lover of the ocean and understands that there is more to the sea than we can comprehend. He's seen an abundant amount of life out there. Seals, sharks, octopus, all sorts of sea life. He's gone deep diving, but has also caged dive with sharks. The man is fearless and a relentless sailor. His respect and love for the sea comes from his father who took him out to sea all the time as a younger boy. Me? Not so much. I used this vacation as an opportunity to get away from my life troubles for a while, since at the time, I was at rock bottom and was going through a really rough patch in my life with addiction and bad people. Moving forward, we're out on the coast, probably no more than 10 miles out at sea, when something extremely large goes underneath the boat. I don't know anything about sea life, and I don't claim to. I mean, I know the basic stuff, 
but I couldn't tell you about whale migrations or anything like that. I am the farthest thing from a marine biologist. My first thought was that it was a whale swimming underneath the boat. The boat got rocked pretty hard. I guessed at the time whatever went underneath us must have just bumped into us by accident. My friend comes out of the cabin, excited, telling his wife to come out here that there's a whale close by. So my guess obviously wasn't that wrong. I trusted my friend because he knows what he's talking about when it comes to being out at sea. So I quickly ran to the starboard side to see what I thought was going to be a whale emerging to the surface in the distance. It wasn't. We didn't see anything other than a bunch of bubbles a little ways off. Right when John was about to say, get my binoculars, to his wife, this large serpent-like body rises out of the water, away from the ship, and goes back down again. When I say large, I'm talking large. Capital L, font size 72. There was no head that rose beyond the water and no tail. It just looked to be part of the body. John and I were in total awe at the size of this serpent-like body that appeared out of the water. I'll tell you exactly what I remember. The under part of it was white, while the top part was a green-gray scale pattern. The weather outside was perfectly clear and sunny. I, we couldn't have asked for a better day or time to have a sighting like this. There was no mistaking what we were seeing. The body portion of whatever animal this belonged to was much longer than that of a whale so I want to clear that up right now. The girth of this part of the body we witnessed was larger than that of a whale, to which some might be in disbelief, but when I say large, I do mean it. What I'm guessing happened is that whatever this was must have come underneath our boat, heading off into the west, and as it got further out, my assumption is that it probably dove downwards underwater, and as a result, part of its body curved and coiled above the surface before submerging again. If I'm not being clear enough, just imagine a colossal-sized sea serpent that we saw part of the body of. I'm going to try and give you an estimate of girth and potential length, but I can't be so sure. Because we were out at sea, I have no way to measure how far away or how far close we were to it. I'm going to go ahead and guess maybe 70 yards out. I will say it was close enough we got to look at it for a few seconds as it appeared out of the water and then submerged again. When you see something like that, it's hard not to be in total awe of the size of something like that living in the water. I know it was visibly larger all around in girth than that of a whale. You could just tell by the sight alone. I learned from John that blue whales are around 13 meters in girth, and this was maybe double that. Length could be very hard to judge. Bear with me, but it could have possibly been 60 feet minimum, very easily. With how large that part of the body that came out, and how serpent-like it was, it would make total sense for it to have a much more elongated body. It could have been more than 100 feet in length. We don't know. We didn't see. Whatever it was thought to have been large enough to rock the boat as hard as it did by just barely bumping into us from underneath. We were anchored at the time of this event, and it was roughly 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Because we were anchored, Nothing really happened. We didn't drift off or anything like that. We would have, though, had we not been anchored because of the sheer force of this bump. The large amount of bubbles we saw right before part of the body surfaced was an immense amount of air escaping to the surface. So it's possible that whatever this was, like a whale, isn't 100% aquatic in its bio makeup. I'm just throwing a bunch of speculation out here based on what me and John saw. I spent some time talking all this over with John on the phone before sending this to you, and so a lot of the knowledge of whales, measurements, etc., and whatnot are mainly from him, because like I said, my knowledge is so minimal of sea life. John's wife never came out of the cabin at the time, and I think she was doing something for John, like getting his binoculars, so she didn't witness it. Only John and I did. I saw an unknown kind of fish, with tentacle-like tendrils protruding on its back, the size of a small person covered in dark green and black scales, with a tapered face and bright yellow eyes. This was during my vacation to Japan I had, years and years ago. I was with my friend Akira, 
who spoke fluent Japanese, sightseeing, and going all around the country to see the beauty Japan held. We were visiting Lake Yamanaka. My Japanese friend was doing some photography work on different sightings throughout the area. Lake Yamanaka is gorgeous in every way. It is one of the five lakes around Mount Fuji, I'm told. I only know these things because my friend Akira had told me all this before taking me out sightseeing. Akira, who was doing photography at the time, was setting up her tripod. That's when close by us came this large fish, bigger than we could have both ever imagined. It came up right to the surface, just underneath the water. It was clear as day, and you could see nearly every detail of this fish as it nearly broke surface. It almost glided across the water effortlessly, it was so graceful. It was amazing. You could make out every distinction in the details I just explained. As it moved past us, you could see these long tendrils at the end of its tail that dragged behind it by 10 or more feet. Long, thick tendrils that looked very reminiscent of tentacles. I don't know if they moved or had any use or what not, but it was an incredible sight to witness. There were a bunch of other people on the path next to us watching this as it went on. This fish swam up near us and then veered off and kept going while staying right underneath the surface in full view. People were astonished, pointing their cameras and snapping pictures. I had never seen a fish like this in my life. My friend Akira, who like I said is Japanese and spoke it fluently, also spoke good English and told me that everybody else was just as surprised as us. She did not recognize such a fish ever before. Sorry my story is so short. There isn't much more to it. I had tried to Google a fish in Japan or on lakes with a similar description, but I could not come up with much. Maybe there are just certain fish that belong to certain areas of the world.